Olivia Rodrigo. That's Dula P. Hello everyone. Unfortunately, it is not Olivia Rodrigo. It is me. Hi sisters. Ah! This is going to be probably one of my last psychology videos. If you haven't seen my other video, watch that. But I'm niching down, babes. I cannot keep amassing an audience which subscribes for like one particular type of content, which I don't really enjoy making all the time because then I'm kind of forced to continue to create that content. Hey, you gotta understand, this is a buffet here. This is a buffet. This is a continental breakfast. And if you can't understand that and you don't want that, go to McDonald's where they serve one type of cuisine. Cause we serve everything here, okay? So today we're going to be talking about psychology tricks, which I use to get whatever I want. And I'm a psychology student. By the way, some of these tricks are very manipulative. And I just want to say, I don't like actually use these all the time. In fact, I don't because I don't like manipulating people. Or do I? I think about it sometimes if the situation calls for it. If you want someone to take you seriously and take your ideas into consideration, if you're not someone with a lot of credibility, say that the idea is from someone like notable. For example, like, oh, this is what Bill Gates said or Elon Musk. Or Simone Squared. Kidding. I actually use this a lot. If someone doesn't believe what I'm saying, I'll be like, I learned this in my psychology class for my professor. I'm doing that right now. Have I not been doing that in my past three psychology videos when I could have easily just Googled these facts? I am manipulating you. I'm kidding. Don't think about that. Don't think about that. Using the words because means you're like 93% more likely to get people to do things for you. I have talked about this before, but not in the context of the word because there was an experiment basically and someone wanted to use the printer. Other people, they just said, can I skip the line? And then there was one person that said, can I skip the line because I need a print. Something very simple, like obviously you need a print, you're going to the printer. And people, 93% of people let that person through because they use the word because. It doesn't matter how bizarre the reasoning is. The human mind is gonna fill in that blank. The blank is, well, she said I need to use the printer, but oh, there must be like a more urgent issue. If you just say I need to use the printer, it's just that. So throw in the word because. If someone does something wrong and they're doing something that you don't want them to do, instead of telling them, hey, Kaylee, don't do that, you fucking bitch, tell her what she should be doing instead. That's the trick. And it especially works really well with children. There is a technique called the disrupt then reframe technique. And it's a sneaky way of getting people to cooperate with you basically. So I'm just gonna read the study. It found that experimenters went door to door selling note cards for a charity. And in the scenario, they told people it was 300 pennies for eight cards, which is a bargain. And basically this technique works to confuse people because it disrupts the thought process. And while trying to figure out how many dollars 300 pennies comes out to, people get distracted and they just accept the deal overall. Yeah, you can really throw people off if you just confuse them a little bit and then they'll agree out of simplicity to simplify their life. If you're trying to get someone's guard down, always make them laugh. Light-hearted humor, try to get them to smile, crack a joke. I actually realized recently, because I've been interacting with a lot of new people who are quite like cold, I very naturally do this. I would turn into a bloody comedian when people are cold around me. It's always like a game. I'm like, I have to crack you. And in the end, I get there, bitch. It works. You get people on your side when you get them to laugh a little. So before we continue, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, BetterHelp. Thank you for sponsoring today's video. BetterHelp is a professional therapy service which will match you to your perfect therapist based on your needs. If you have something that's preventing you from achieving your full potential or affecting your happiness, for example, I got a therapist during lockdown because I just really needed that support and it helped me so much. Well, BetterHelp is for you because it's entirely done online and you have access to your therapist whenever you want. You can just send them a message and they'll reply whenever they get the chance. It's also available worldwide and there's literally 20,000 plus therapists in the BetterHelp network. So you're bound to find a therapist which meets your needs. Also, you can start talking with them within 48 hours, which is so soon. And what I really like about it is that you can log in any time to send your therapist a message because sometimes you just need someone to talk to and get something off of your chest. You'll get timely and 
floor for responses and you're never gonna have to wait in the waiting room for your therapist. You can schedule calls whenever you want. Also, if your therapist doesn't really match your needs, BetterHelp is committed to matching you with a therapist that does so you can change free of charge. It's actually more affordable than traditional therapy and financial aid is available because BetterHelp wants you to live a happier life today. So make sure you visit betterhelp.com slash Simone Squared. That's better, H-E-L-P, help. We're over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with an experienced professional today. I have a special offer, so if you use my code, Simone Squared, you'll get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. This is a very subtle manipulation tactic. Most people use it, but throw in the word everyone. Hey, everyone hates you, Kaylee. Who is everyone? You didn't say who everyone is, but now Kaylee's like, oh. Simone said everyone hates me, so everyone hates me. Once you notice the everyone trick, you realize how often people use it and it is a manipulation tactic. I don't think people consciously think about that though. Okay, when you want to persuade someone, use the name in the middle of a request, especially if they're not very close to you. It works because people like to feel acknowledged. I think I've talked about this so often. And once they feel acknowledged with you, they're more unlikely to be disagreeable when they're with you. Okay, if you're debating with someone and you kind of want to throw them off a bit, ignore what they said and just kind of smile at them and be silent. And then they'll repeat the question and they'll feel like an idiot. And that puts you in a dominant position. If you want to get someone addicted to you, you've probably heard this on TikTok. I actually, I self-discovered this technique. You know why? <laughs> Baby, I was in a trauma bond. I had a trauma bond. Yeah, you want to get someone addicted to you, don't recommend this. But you have to create a trauma bond. How do you do that? You be hot, you're cold. You give them mass amounts of serotonin, oxytocin, dopamine. And then you take it away from them. It's awful i don't even know why people say this is how you make someone fall in love on tiktok because it's not i have been there it is the worst thing ever and just don't do it unless you're a really cruel person i just babes don't do it but yeah when you're creating such high swings of like positive emotion and the negative emotion you're establishing a trauma bond and it takes so long to break. The only way to break a trauma bond is to go absolutely no contact. Hi, sisters. Ah! Okay, when you're negotiating with someone and you want a higher offer, first of all, never take the sec first offer. Second of all, make like a visible flinch or a grunt when you get the offer and it'll make the other person think they need to offer you something higher. If you like the first offer, don't visibly go. People can see it on your face look a little disgusted. I've talked about this before, it's the power of options. This is how you get your way with something. Let's say your friends are going out to eat, you're making the plans. And you have a choice of three restaurants. Don't give them too many options. People don't like many options. Pick one that you want to go to that sounds amazing and then make the other two options sound absolutely heinous. And that way you're always going to get what you want. Okay, in a work environment, Never ever ever outshine the master. This is actually from the 48 Laws of Power. It's really funny because someone in my comments recommended me that book. And I was thinking, honey, you think I haven't read that book? I am the 48 Laws of Power. I'm kidding. But I have found this to be particularly true when I was working uh, in marketing and I had an awful boss. When I would outshine her, she would come for me. When I would do a little bad and then give her all the credit she loved it don't outshine the master because you never know when you're going to need them especially if you're working in a really large corporate environment also when you ask people for help and get them to talk about themselves or how they learn a particular skill a situation where you get them to brag they will like you more because everyone loves to brag about themselves in job interviews and when making friends i've talked about this one before but you always need to talk about what you offer. It doesn't work to go in there and be like, this is what you can give to me. It works a little bit, you know, like when you want to determine if a job's a good fit, but it can't be a one-sided relationship. You have to sell yourself. Why would I be a good friend to you? What are my good qualities which make me a good friend, a good candidate for this position? You have to sell yourself. So many people don't because I have hired people in the past where they just go, oh, I really want to work for you because I think you'll be able to give me this. So I really want to be a friend because I think you're really good at giving advice. All I'm hearing is I just want to take, 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 take and 
you got to sell yourself in life. If you want to receive less criticism from the person that's giving the critiquing, make sure you sit next to them or in close proximity because close proximity means they're less likely to openly criticize you. Go sit next to your teacher. Don't appear too perfect and don't appear too flawed. We have talked about this. You need to appear just right. Goldilocks, just right. So openly show that you make mistakes, but you can never show that you make too many mistakes, otherwise you're gonna look like a klutz. People like people who are relatable, but you cannot be, you can't look sloppy. And if someone's too flawed, you know, they look sloppy. And always admit your mistakes, because it makes you look more human and people are more likely to like you, be less intimidated by you, especially if you're an intimidating individual. Okay, if you want someone to like you more, you ask them for a favor, you ask them to do something for you, or you can ask them to explain something to you. Our behavior towards an individual, it shapes what we think of them. So it's like a psychological trick here. If we're helping someone, psychologically we're like, oh, I guess we like them. Why would I help someone I don't like? So there you go. Nodding gives the impression that you know what you're talking about and people are more likely to agree with you. When you notice someone is trying to trigger you or you're in an argument and they raise their voice, never raise your voice, don't react. It's gonna make them feel like a fool. And if you're silent, they'll fill in the gap. You can even, in the middle of it, bring up something personal in their life. Like, oh Michael, by the way, how's your family? It will immediately calm them down and they'll feel like an idiot. This is the ultimate hack. We talked about this before, you guys. People are more likely to remember things at the beginning or the end of the day, at the beginning of a list or at the end of a list. If you have a job appointment, make it at the beginning of the day or at... Make it at the beginning of the day. People are fresh then, they'll remember. End of the work day, you know, even though they'll probably remember you, people are tired, so I just wouldn't do it at the end of the day. People love each other. The world would be a better place to live. Roman, Roman, vacacion. Mi hada madrina dijo que sí. Este de aquí me hizo llorar. Este otro me dice marica. Este otro de mí piensa mal. Esto es lo que hago cuando me chingan. Wow. Wow. It's gonna be our honeymoon. Wow.